room. I don't know, forget what the name of the room is, but um, um, and to kill it, what they would do, you heat it up. But what they used for fuel source back in the day was peat, which is effectively like one stage before coal. So it's like gr- um, boggy sort of earth that's like millions of years old that hasn't quite turned into coal yet, but um, with certain amount of time and pressure, it would eventually do that. Um, so basically puts off a ton of smoke. So without, basically by accident, they were introducing all this smoke to this germinated wheat that they're about to um, use for the distillation of the spirit. And it effectively made the whiskey or the spirit they made smoky. Then as technology came on, they realized that they could use more efficient fuels like gas or electricity or whatever to kill the the wheat before it grew too much. And that then of course stopped using the uh, stopped the use of peat but that meant there was no smoke so they were making whiskey that was very crisp and fresh and sweet and it was lacking that level which to be honest i think the majority of people first trying it prefer i don't know it's it's pretty gnarly when you've got a lot of peat in there yeah um but then that gave people two options you know you can either um, use this more modern method, which will mean that you spend less money on fuel. It's a lot easier. You can do more of it in in um, one session, or you burn peat, and it may be slower and more sort of man hours, but you get this smoky flavour. Anyway, long story short, people either use peat to kill the um, the wheat, or they can just add peat smoke to it once it's killed, and they don't need to use it as a fuel, um, or they don't. And that's where you get peated whiskey and non-peated whiskey, effectively. Hopefully that made sense. Amazing. Mate, every yeah. day's a school day. That's, <laughs> you did a much better job than I was about to do there. <laughs> oh, God. Nice maybe we should do an alternate take where I, I explain it. <laughs> Half cooked and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my knowledge of that is that basically peated whiskey, like, tastes smoky at the end of the day, right? Because of the use mm-hmm. of peat in this process. It t- yeah. It's got that sort of... Well, basically, just go to your local pub and ask for a Laphroaig. They've usually got like a standard Laphroaig. Is it mm. Laphroaig 10 or Laphroaig 12? That's like the standard one. 10, 10. standard, yeah. It's on pretty much every pub shelf. Like, mm-hmm. get a dram of that um, and it will blow your head off. And it's, mm. But at least you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So obviously, like, there are lots of, lots of whiskey um, brands that use, that have this sort of, this flavor, this smoky, strong, peated flavor. And a lot of them come from uh, the island of Isla. That's correct, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I it's, think it's yeah, sort of known. most famous ones for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of known for having this this peated uh, ancestry, or whatever the word is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Usage. you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm going for today. Lefroy Select. So this is like this sort of, like a director's cut, I guess. It's not the standard thing. It's like a sort of one of the special ones or whatever, but... Um, yeah, this is this is terrific. I'm gonna do a little mm. little cork pop here. Oh yeah, I wonder that, if oh, you can tell how far down <laughs> <laughs> by the pop. I was gonna say that. Yeah, he's been enjoying that one a little bit. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. what's that? A three quarters. That is three quarters yeah. gone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So it's. I think this for me was the reason. The difference between non-peated and peated whiskey is is the reason I got into whiskey because I randomly i think i was having a house party at university i wanted to before knowing anything about whiskey i wanted to look more sophisticated than perhaps i was at the time and uh, i went into <laughs> a whiskey shop it. down the road yeah exactly man that's how i live my life um <laughs> and i was like i've got 30 quid and i want to buy a bottle of whiskey can you recommend me one um uh which they are pretty good at doing but um yeah we, we can maybe talk about where to buy whiskey actually in a future episode but anyway yeah. um and they they turned me to a bottle of Tormor, which is actually like um, a brand. I don't know. I cannot remember the distillery. Someone may, listening may know. Um, this distillery is not called Tormor, but it's a brand. It's their um, peated brand that they sell um, aside from their main sort of uh, single malt. Anyway, it was smoky. I didn't expect it to be smoky. I didn't know whiskey could taste like a campfire. It, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's <laughs> kind of hard to explain if you haven't had it before, but it literally tastes like you're drinking smoke it's it's unbelievable yeah it tastes like if you can imagine if you're picturing wood smoke in your mind as opposed to mm. like someone standing next to you in this smoking shelter smoking a fag it's like sure. it's that woody 
earthy, leafy, you know, that's, yeah. that sort of smoke, basically. It's that sort of flavour. Yeah, totally. And that realisation just blew my mind. Because, I mean, the guy in the whiskey, whiskey shop didn't even mention Pete or anything like that. So it's like I literally had no idea before I started this, and it, it completely blew my mind. And that difference is is what totally hooked me, man, That just realising that the, the array of different tastes you can get from whiskey. And, um, yeah, it's it's totally worth it. Such a good hobby to get into. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the frog's a good one. Any anything from Isla really, and there's there's kind of two, as far as I can tell, there's like two main smoky flavors you can get from Peter's whiskeys. There's like the iodine kind of salty, like almost medicinal, medicinal, uh, medicinal. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few beers already, so um, medicinal rather. Um, That's the sort of odd bag. Uh, side Ardbeg, of the ring, right? yeah, Kalila, that, those those guys exactly. Like it's it's almost like TCP, yeah. <laughs> which sounds bad, but it's not. I promise you, it's amazing. Um, and then there's the more sort of like barbecue, like um, uh, I would say Lafroig comes under that. Um, Lagavulin is another one. Is like it's almost like barbecued like meats and like it's like a barbecue smoke. It's a bit different. Yeah, it's not nice. as like medicinal as others. Um. So I'm literally the complete opposite of you. I've, I'm Talabardian again um, from a nice. couple of weeks ago. And now this whiskey has re sort of taught me that putting water in a whiskey is so important sometimes and how different it can make it. Because this one, you put a little spoonful of water in there and it just completely changes the way it tastes. It's amazing. Nice. Nice. So sweet, but no peat whatsoever. Ooh. So this... This one's a great example of uh, because I've never tasted this whiskey. I'm, I'm yeah. a mere, mere passenger <laughs> in this explanation. <laughs> yeah, but uh, sounds great, man. Enjoy. Yeah, it. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's real good. <laughs> but yeah, um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Because lock, lockdown is slowly coming to an end. We, I think, maybe next time or the one after that might be a, a, a physical encounter. That would be great. Maybe, well, in, maybe in the garden or something like that, and we could, we could do our best. Sounds- Sounds perfect. In fact, I'll tell you what we should do. What should we do? Well, let me tell you what we'll do. <laughs> I'll, uh, you'll come, you come around mine to my garden. Oh, I'll yeah. cook us some steaks. Oh, yes. I will have some beers ready. There'll be steaks there. They'll be big. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, we'll have some whiskey and maybe a cigar or two. Who knows? We'll see. <sighs> cigar special. That let's, would be fantastic. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Why do I sign? Yeah. <laughs> oh man i'm already excited about that mate mm. i've got a silly question okay okay bear with me here right this happened to oh, me God. a couple of days ago right here we go <laughs> so i'm in bed asleep <laughs> okay right, with with my girlfriend right as as normal and yep. uh <laughs> i was um this must have been Oh, no, I, d- I did look at the clock. This is like around four in the morning, right? So I'm okay. well and truly asleep. And uh, you know when something happens in your dream and then you wake up and you realize that it, you were dreaming that because of something happening in real life, right? For example, if you drank loads of water or a few beers the night before, you're dreaming about taking a piss and then you wake up needing a pee and you get up and go for a piss, right? <laughs> so in my yeah. dream, bear that in mind, in my dream, <laughs> it's nothing embarrassing, no. Oh, okay. So in my dream, I had this bug like crawling on my face, right? It was crawling Jesus. up my neck, onto my chin, and mm. over towards my mouth, right, in my dream, okay? Sure. And then all of a sudden, I, 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 was, I, I woke up, basically, uh-huh. realizing there was a real bug on my face, and Jesus because my Christ. subconscious had felt, you know, my body had felt this, it would put it into my dream. So, I, so right. I woke up, and there was a bug sitting on my lip, bottom lip, just to the just to the left, right? Bloody Some hell. sort of bug. So I wake up, realize it's real life. There's a real bug on my face, and yeah. my reflexes just sort of go to swat it off my face, like I just like whack it off my face. And it's yeah. it's a real bug, real life. I'm awake now, and it's yeah. physical. I can feel it. I can feel my hand hitting the bug. <laughs> Right, and it's like a physical thing. So it's not like a it's not like a spider that's like soft and wispy. It's like a mm-hmm. seems like a hard shelled sort of bug, oh, and I Jesus. flick it, and I even hear it hit the little side table, right, <laughs> and and like ricochet off, <laughs> right, and then 
immediately after that, I've got this stinging sensation on my lip, right? Where it, where it had clearly bitten me, right? <laughs> but because it's four in the morning and I just had a little panic and I'm, I'm dazed and I've just woken up, whatever, I fall almost instantly back to sleep, right? <laughs> What's happening? Okay. okay, so I wake up in the morning and like go on with my day, forgotten all about this bug, right? <laughs> and then eventually, <laughs> my girlfriend says to me, uh, "Oh, you've got a little like little scab on your face, a little something on your lip." And I go and have a look, and it's right where this bug bit me. What? And, and I uh, and I, and then I realise, I remember, I remember what happened with the bug at four a.m. or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> "What the hell?" So I immediately go to the corner of the. You know, where I sleep and looked like down the side, no bug, nothing, nothing to be found. So my question to you is, what was it? What bug was it? What's that bug? Okay. This is a good, this is, will be, this will be a regular segment, by the way. What's that <laughs> What's bug? What's that bug? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have this, this will be a recurring one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bloody hell, mate. Um, okay. Well, let's go through the facts. It's it's got subs <laughs> It's got substance. It's got a shell. It's got an it, exoskeleton. It felt like it had some sort of exoskeleton, yeah. <laughs> All right, exoskeleton tick. Um <laughs> it it has the ability to bite humans. Yeah. So that's like the majority of beetles as far as I'm aware. Right. They're out. They're out of the question. Okay. Uh, are they? The beetles no, some beetles bite. I don't know. Oh Jesus, dude! Here's, here, I, here are my initial thoughts. Okay, there were please. no. It, it, it was just like a tiny little, like scratchy little bit of skin, like not quite a scab, but almost a scab, right? So okay. it wasn't something like the two little pincers of a classic spider bite. Yeah. So it wasn't that, and it also at the time was nowhere near painful enough to be a wasp, or like a bee, or something like. Because I was thinking it was about a wasp sort of size, right? When I felt it with my hand. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, but it didn't hurt as much. No, no, no. I would have, you know, I would have well and truly woken up if it was a wasp sting or a bee sting. And it didn't buzz either. I didn't hear any buzzing or anything. It was like it was a crawling bug, like a, I don't know, like a, like a, okay. lo- like a large ladybug. It felt like that, but it bit me. And it and maybe it's, it was it's a just, beetle. It's then. only just gone away now, today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Listeners, first please all, call in is, with your yeah. ideas. What's that bug? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it just like, you know, it, Dude, it freaked me out in the morning when I remembered yeah. it. <laughs> it's like, what the hell was that bug? Mate, that's horrendous. Like, okay, we're talking about men that are flawed. That's my, one of my big flaws is my completely irrational fear of all things that fly and crawl. Um, <laughs> the creepy so, crawlies of this world. The creepy crawlies, yeah. I mean, there's certain ones that I'm fine with, and if it's small enough, I don't care. Um, but yeah, no, that, I, that's that got to be some sort of beetle, I'm going to say. Yeah. Like a black beetle bites. They bite. Do they? A black beetle? Yeah. I, 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 my knowledge of beetles and stuff is very... Well, I don't, I don't know if that's its like scientific term, but it's a beetle and it's black. Okay. Yeah, you know, the ones you get like in fields and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Your, your they can get beetle. pretty big, but the small ones are yeah, the yeah, your classic beetle. Yeah, common or garden beetle. <laughs> yeah. Uh um, black beetle is harmful. No, it seems like that's their name. British okay. oh British beetle British beetle or black beetle. Okay. Are they, they harmful? Bite, but not for harmful to humans, but it's just certain allergic reactions like blisters, contact uh dermatitis and more. Maybe that was it. That's it. It looks about the right size. Oh. Could have been that. We might have solved it, folks. There we go. You Had you come in from a walk recently? Maybe it followed you in. I don't. No. Yeah, maybe. 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 Bloody hell, mate. But yeah. Well, Jesus, I'm I'm glad you're okay because that could have been much. fatal. Thank God you live in the UK and not freaking Australia or yeah. somewhere with actual like <laughs> Philippines harmful or insects. Yeah. You know the, right. You know what I saw yesterday? Social <laughs> media, classic, wasting time. Yeah. Going along. I see this picture of this giant bat. Like a human-sized oh. bat, and there's like a little comment on there. We did the same thing. We saw the same. Did thing. We see the same picture. Oh god! Oh, that's flying terrible. fox, mate. They're, they're flying, the flying fox. foxes. They're like a hu- almost. They're like a small human-sized bat that, like, yeah, they do all the things that bats do, but they're like massive. And I was yeah. like, nah, this is a joke. This can't be real. Googled it, obviously, and it's a real thing. Yeah, same. In the Philippines. We did the same thing. We're like, I, I, it's exactly. I said to Caitlin, don't be silly. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not as big 